Okay, so here's the case, the Corsair Obsidian case. Can't really see too much at the moment because it's got all the plastic wrap on it, but it's taken out of the box, it's good quality. Nice uh, solid build it fills it. It's got two uh, front USB 3 ports, pretty standard really. Power switch, headphones and microphone. So uh, we'll dive inside and have a good look at that. All right, so quick look at it. It's a uh, got a couple of thumb screws there, which we just uh, undo, take them off. As you can see, plenty of room there for uh, PCO Express socks. Fan at the back, power supply unit goes there. Come around the front, we've got a, a fan cover, which just clicks in and out of place. Just press it and that's, uh, you can see you've got your two fans there top is a nice little grill there keep the dust away a little bit uh, all just slots back into place somehow I can get it in position with one hand left hand at that there we go and that just slots back into place okay thumb screws on the side let's take them off nice and simple and one down the bottom and that should just pull out there we go that just pulls out pop that down on the floor and here we go here's the inside of the case nice and simple there risers already in place as you can see these are the the risers they're already in place so uh we can have a little play with that if we need. As you can see, there's uh, guards everywhere there for the dust, which is handy. Plenty of cages for storage. Drives up there if you still run the old fashioned uh, CD, DVD, Blu ray drives. Yep, and room up top for where I'll be putting the, uh, the Corsair H115i for cooling. So, uh, Let's get stuck in. I'll put this on my tripod and we'll get started on the build. Right, so make sure you've got plenty of room to work with when you're building your new PC. Always check the motherboard uh, with your cooler because uh, coolers generally need a backplate put on the motherboard. Uh, because I'm using the 2011 socket uh, V3 it doesn't need a backplate for my cooler so that's happy days there nothing needs to be inserted but just check with your cooler open your cooler up before you start doing anything and have a check there move all your wires out the way so you've got plenty of room to work with get get them untangled etc and that just makes life a lot simpler as you can see there I'm pushing everything out the way as best as possible make sure your risers are all set for your motherboard as well a quick test there is to just hang the motherboard over we'll do that in a minute but first off we'll put in the IO plate where all the uh, connectors I'll fumble about a bit but I'll get it in <laughs> Right, so that's the uh, simple part done. We'll uh, grab the motherboard now. And we'll make sure it all lines up okay. There we go, I'm just offering it up to the uh, IO plate so it sits in. And I have a good check around, make sure all the risers are in the correct place. Make sure there's nothing uh, interfering no loose cables anywhere no loose wires I mean, last thing we want is uh, shorten out when we go to turn on so uh, I do all them little checks and uh, before I do anything else so I'm happy with uh, the position of the motherboard I'm happy the risers are all in position it's time to screw in the little screws and make sure it's nice and secure don't over tighten things and uh, yeah, just uh, firmly but not overly tighten, otherwise you'll end up crushing the motherboard, which isn't good. Right, 
if you're anything like me I've got big fat hands so it makes things a little tricky at times as you can see there's not a lot of room for my big fat hands but uh, yeah just take your time be cautious and uh, you'll have no problems really simple nothing complicated there at all except getting the screws into place Right, last one going in now. Happy days. Right, so the motherboard's all screwed down. Time to add the power supply unit. Using a 1300 watt G2 power supply unit here. Massively overkill for what I'm using, but it was running three Titans originally, so uh, hence why I had a big old uh, power supply unit like this. You can get much smaller, and they fit in a lot better as well. They don't take up so much room, but we'll put that in and we'll screw that up four little screws on that and we'll uh, move on to the next stage okay so we've got the uh, motherboard the power supply unit and the CPU in the socket although uh, I shall show you how to do the CPU properly in a bit uh, it's time to fit the cooler to fit the cooler was a bit of a pain I couldn't do it on its side that was, I had to do it with that up, so uh, I'll turn the case up and have a go at that there. But you don't get to see that. But it's a simple case of just line up the uh, the radiator with the uh, top holes in the case. Very simple, uh, all self-explanatory. You can see how it is. Make sure you don't use too longer screws. Use the screws it comes with. Otherwise, you'll pierce the fins and you don't water everywhere. So just be a bit cautious there and make sure you've got the right screws. Because the way the uh, cooler sits, it made it a bit awkward when I had the uh, exhaust fan at the back of the case. So I removed the exhaust fan. I uh, can easily put it back if I want, but I don't feel there's much need. You've got two fans pushing out to the top, which I'll be fitting on in a minute, and two two fans sucking in. So it's making a nice little uh, vacuum, and everything's going out to the top of the case where it should be going. Right, so I've left all the wrapping on the uh, cooler head just to make things simple, and uh, we're now at the fans to the cooler because of uh, we want the uh, air going to the top of the case we'll have them as a as a push on the inside I don't mind admitting this was a, a little bit tricky for my fat hands when you look down at the bottom it's uh, quite hard to get the uh, screws through but uh, I did manage to do it and because uh, I got a nice thin screwdriver it was relatively simple but just be careful not to knock any capacitors and uh, yeah just screw them in you haven't got to go overly tight either just enough so they don't vibrate everything's nice and firm and make sure your cables are in a position you want so you can easily move them about as you can see the fans are blowing upwards so that will exhaust the air the hot air that's built up in the case at the top and that's where you want to go heat rising so we'll help it rise quicker we get it out the case and uh, into the room so we sit there in a nice little sweat box everyone likes a sweat box and no I don't sound like anything like that fake taxi driver if anyone says it again <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay so we've got the rad in position we've got the motherboard in position we've got the power supply in position we've got the chip in position it's time to add the uh, cooler to the chip so uh, take off the plastic wrap keep the wires out of the way from the uh, two fans we've just added as best we can and we'll see uh, it already comes with uh, thermal paste on so uh, no problems there don't need to buy any extra thermal paste although it's always handy to have if you make a mistake you can always wipe it off and start again which I had to because uh, unbeknownst to me uh, this motherboard <laughs> that's, that you're currently seeing uh, wasn't uh, compatible with my chip in terms of the BIOS and I couldn't flash the BIOS so uh, yeah that was a bit of a pain zero zero error so uh, good old overclockers fantastic uh, I'll see can I swap it over for the uh, 
A2 motherboard X99A-2 and no problems at all but it's the same uh, principle anyway uh, fitting this uh, cooler regardless of that everything's gone right as it should do you just put in uh, four posts onto your motherboard uh, self-explanatory with the cooler it's very easy instructions there you can't go wrong so you pop in your four posts and then pop on the four screws the way to do this is always corner to corner don't do one side up really tight and then go down the other side always go corner to corner so uh, you keep everything sort of uniform don't over tighten either keep everything as like try and keep everything square so you do like a few turns on one a few turns on another and then we'll go for the next two so it just keeps everything nice and uh, flat we don't bend nothing we don't force nothing you don't over tighten either if you over tighten you'll pull the socket up and warp the board and uh, you'll also encounter problems down the line at some point so uh, again don't over tighten uh, just a firm grip is all you need really uh, they're thumb screws so uh, don't use a screwdriver just use your thumbs and uh, once you feel some good retention that should be enough so once the cooler's firmly placed we start putting in the uh, little cables making sure they're all plugged in properly I don't worry about cable tidying whilst I'm building I want to make sure everything works okay otherwise it ends up as a nightmare taking everything back out and uh, like I said I had to because the motherboard wasn't compatible on the BIOS and I couldn't flash the BIOS without a newer chip and flashback wasn't working so uh, yeah uh, just make sure you know you keep everything free nice and easy to move about and if you need to take bits out at some point it's easy enough and just make sure everything's working before you uh, start doing all your cable tidying right with all the little wires connected it's time to plug into the memory we're using uh, four sticks here of, uh, of XR GDDR4 and uh, you just make sure you plug in the slots lift the risers up check your motherboard for which slots to go in uh, I've got eight slots on my board and I'm only using four sticks so uh, they go in the grey ones on the uh, X99A2 so just check your your motherboard uh, manual to see which slots uh, your memory would go in if, if you have less than what you got also make sure you, your board is compatible with the memory that can always be a bit tricky uh, latest BIOS is normally accommodate newer memory so uh, yeah just uh, slot them in nice and firm lift the risers and listen for the clicks and then just uh, check and make sure everything's all squared up always do a checklist as you go along make sure you've checked everything uh, make sure all your little connectors are in the right place make sure your wires are and not uh, touching anything have a good look around the board make sure it's all nice and clean still so uh, with all that done we'll start putting in the little connectors for the uh, power and everything else you get a little uh, block thankfully which is good for my eyes they're not as good as they used to be so uh, we connect the little wires to the block and then put the block on the motherboard got the block plugged in now plugging in the front two USB panel ports there's uh, a little slot there everything's uh, the size but because I've got fat hands again I'm struggling to push them in but if you've got thinner hands you'll have no problems you'll have got fat hands you'll have no problems just got to be a bit more careful so uh, plug that in and we'll now start plugging in all the power supply parts you'll see uh, again everything is uh, modular on my uh, G2 so but you can't go wrong everything f fits into the correct slots you can't put something into a slot that doesn't belong so uh, just check PCI PCI on this board you've got a 24 pin Molex at the top of the memory there which I'll put in in a sec and just to the left under the two fans there's a 8 pin CPU connector uh, you might have a 4 pin you might have an 8 pin uh, you might not have anything but just make sure they're always plugged in otherwise you'll get no power into your CPU what I'm doing now is I'm plugging in the uh, solid state drive I don't mess about too much uh, with anything when I do my first build I always just plug in the basics make sure they're uh, 
all working okay if you plug in too much you could have a bit of a head scratcher trying to figure out what was wrong here there and everywhere so I just plug in a basic boot drive uh, the graphics card and that's pretty much it really and uh, when I connect that up I'll connect to a monitor with a mouse and keyboard I don't plug anything else in that doesn't need it otherwise like I said you could end up with problems and you don't know what it is so uh, eliminate as much as possible just to make sure everything's working there's two uh, little plates here at the back of the uh, the case which uh, need to be removed they're simple little thumb screws you just remove them and that frees up the PCI Express slot so uh, the others there are to stop dust getting in you don't want dust so uh, we'll just remove these two and then I can easily put in my graphics card the card I'm using is a Gigabyte G1 Gaming 1080 uh, that goes in the top PCI Express slot there's a little uh, catch there just move the catch to the side push that home and you'll see the catch or you should see the catch uh, close up once that's home and then we'll put in a thumb screw to make it nice and secure once you've done that connect all your cables just walk around the computer make sure everything's plugged in that should be as you can see I've got me a uh, 8 pin connector for the CPU in I've got uh, the 24 pin AT, uh, ATX plugged in I've got uh, a hard drive plugged in well a solid state drive I should say so yeah just walk around make sure everything's all connected as it should be once you're happy that everything's plugged in it's time to take it to the monitor plug in the monitor cable the power switch and the mouse and keyboard and nothing else and press the button everything's lighting up like it should do we like that that's a, a good sign I'll uh, pan the camera down and have a look at the numbers make sure the we don't get no zero zero code uh, everything's spinning around like it should do all the numbers are spinning around I'm checking my screen right now and I can uh, see everything's coming alive and uh, we'll just wait for the BIOS to kick in once you've got your BIOS set your solid state drive as your boot drive if you haven't already installed Windows if you're going to install Windows obviously you set your CD drive as the boot drive or your memory stick as the boot drive and uh, follow the instructions on installing Windows very simple process and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video it was a bit longer like I said I had incompatibility with the board but that was no big issue it's just a case of swapping the board over that took a couple of days to come and that took me 10 minutes to swap over so it was no biggie there at all everything worked fine and uh, thanks for watching hope to see you again soon on my uh, next video so uh, bye for now